So we've been focusing a lot on the standard form of the quadratic equations. Quadratics, again, produce parabolas, those, those U-shaped types, types of graphs. Okay? There are two other forms that are pretty popular that we, that we can work with. Okay? The first one we're going to talk about is the vertex form, and the second is the intercept form. So, like I said, we're going to talk about the vertex form first. Okay? And vertex form follows the formula, the basic formula of y is equal to a, and, that, and that's that same a that we were talking about with the standard. So if it's positive or negative, whether it opens up or down, um, and if it's greater than or less than uh, the 1 in the absolute value form, whether it's wider or skinnier. But then we change it up a little bit, and it's x minus h quantity squared plus k. And the neat thing about this is that when we have a quadratic equation in this form, we're actually given our vertex. Kind of makes sense. If it's called the vertex form, it's going to give you the vertex. And the vertex is located at the point h comma k. Okay? And you'll notice h comes before k just like x comes before y. Okay? So our h and our k that we see here are actually the values for our vertex. Okay? This also gives us our axis of symmetry. So it's x is equal to that h value. Okay? So this one's really popular when, we've, when we're working with quadratics if we want to graph them. Because in vertex form, we're not only given our vertex right away, but we also know our axis of symmetry. Okay? So that's that one. Uh, next, we've got the intercept form. And again, if you remember intercepts, intercepts are places where our graph will cross or intersect one of our axes. And the intercept form could really be named the x-intercept form. Okay? So it follows the form y is equal to a, again there's that value a, times quantity x minus p, close quantity, open quantity x minus q, close quantity. And this is where p and q are x-intercepts. So they have, the, they have the location of x, whatever their x value is, so p0 and q0. Okay? That gives us x-intercepts. Our axis of symmetry in this situation is where we take the actual average. We're going to take the arithmetic average. So we're going to add those two terms together and divide by 2 to get the x value of our axis of symmetry. Okay, so it's that line, p plus q, all divided by 2, is equal to x. Another interesting thing, the way we find our vertex is we take that, that value on our axis of symmetry, p plus q, divided by 2, and we go find our y value. Okay? Cool thing about intercept form, it gives you three points almost off the bat. It gives you your first x-intercept, your second x-intercept, and you can find that axis of symmetry very, very quickly. So all you need to find is one more. Then you've got your fun after using axis, axis of symmetry. Great thing about vertex form, it gives you the vertex and the axis of symmetry right in the formula. And all you need to do is go and find two points on either side. In the next video, you'll see how that happens.